Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can we get a praise the Lord in the house this morning? How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Can we all stand this morning to give God some praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is a good time to be in the house of the Lord this morning. So can we all stand one more time and give the Lord some praise?
just welcome him into this place this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us back into your house one more time, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we'll be going into our morning scripture, which is going to be read by Sister Faith Johnson. Just give God some praise as she comes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, I'll be reading Psalms 96, verses 1 to 13. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of, pe of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. O oh, worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The Lord, the world also shall be established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Let, then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. Before the Lord, for he cometh for, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Here endeth the reading of the word. Hallelujah. God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Isn't God great? Isn't he a great God? And he's greatly to be praised. So this morning, we're just going to go into our time of praise and worship. The mighty God is Jesus. The Prince of Peace is he. The everlasting Father. The King eternally. The wonderful in wisdom. By whom all things were made. The fullness of the Godhead. In Jesus.
fortress. He's my deliverer. So in him, it's all in him. It's in him where I put my trust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. And for that, this morning, I just want to give him praise. Hallelujah. I want to praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy of my praise. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Oh 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In total praise to sometimes sometimes that's all you just just let it go when you lift your hands a sign of surrender that you're letting go when you lift your hands as a sign of surrender that you are going to let it go that you are going to give it to God I don't know what you came into this building with this morning but when you lift your hands in total praise and in total surrender to God that is when he will take full control full control when you lift those hands and you surrender whatever it is that you need to surrender to God you're saying here take it from me take it from me this load is too big for me to carry this load is too much for my hands alone but when you lift your hands and when you surrender to God in total and utter praise, He will take, He will take your struggle, your burdens, your pain, your sorrow, your guilt, your sin. He will take it all. He will take it all when you lift your hands. When you just lift your hands. When you just lift your hands in total praise and in total surrender to God. When you I lift my hands in total praise to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we're going to be going into our morning youth announcements. So Sister Sharon will be coming to us first before our video announcements. This morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. This song is so powerful. Knowing that you can lift your hands. You can lift your hands. If you can lift your hands, 
it is a miracle within itself because some people did not wake up this morning. So we should be full of praise, giving God thanks that we can lift our hands in worship, in adoration to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. As you know, I'm here to, to promote what? The Symposium Health and Wellness. Yes, yeah, so one last push, praying until something happens. Yes, that's what I've been doing. Um, just to, to recap, you can see outside what the topics are for both Saturday and Sunday. I forgot to mention last week, for the Continental Breakfast on the Saturday, it's going to be starting at 9 o'clock. So please, if you're planning to attend on Saturday, come in time to have your Continental Breakfast, and lunch will be served that day as well. We have several people coming in um, as guest speakers, as you know. Um, on Sunday, again, more guest speakers, and some of our own saints from Grace, both days, are involved. Um, but we want to make sure that you're signing up. So if you have not registered, please make sure you do so. We want the numbers in. It was actually the deadline was yesterday. Um, so please make sure that you do that. I did go on a whole little bit of a rant last week about it, everything. What was the key word? Free. Yes. So this is an event that we're running that you, you're not having to pay. There's some event brights um, that you do pay for, but we're offering this free. And it's now open. It's open up to the community. It's not just the churches alone, but people from the community are registering as well. Uh, just a quick side note, I went to go pick up one of the giveaway gifts this past week, and yes, there are several giveaways. If you were to see the Strive office right now, I think the only space available is the bed. So there are several gifts to give away. I went to pick up a gift, and it's a friend of mine who has her own business with a, another friend, and um, while I was there, she heard me talking about the Strive Health and Wellness, event and this lady just when I came back to the spot where she was standing she goes um what was it that you were talking about just now and I rep repeated she goes can you send that information to me please because I want to come so it's just by standing in somebody else's space you know it was spread that way uh just the key things that if you're going to attend the the um defy dementia you need to send us an email stating that you want to attend because we only have 100 spots. And if you need childcare as well, make sure that you email us. I just want to give a shout out to Pastor for allowing us to actually follow through with doing this. And um, especially to uh, everybody that's contributing this drive team, but a special thanks to Sister Courtney James and my mother, Sister Peart. Those weeks that you've seen us in the multipurpose area, it's to push to get this event to run. God is good. He's provided us with individuals that are willing to work, and we just want this event to be a, a very successful event. I believe that it is. We've been praying, and we'll be fasting this week about it as well. Just keep me in your prayers that I continually smile <laughs> through the whole event, even though there might be little thoughts in my head that are not <laughs> happy thoughts, <laughs> but God is going to see me through and see us all through. I hope to see everyone there. God bless. Praise the Lord, everyone. Here are the announcements for this coming week. Monday is men's prayer at 8 p.m., which will be in person. Tuesday is our corporate fasting and prayer meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Wednesday is Bible study at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Friday is youth service here at Grace at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, we meet back here to do it all over again for our service beginning with Sunday school at 10 a.m., pre-service prayer at 10.40 a.m., and worship service at 11 a.m. See you there. Grace family, join us for the Health and Wellness Symposium on Saturday, September 28th and Sunday, September 29th. We will be covering topics like joint pain, women's health, cancer prevention, mental health, dementia, stroke prevention, and more. Please register on Eventbrite. Each family must register for the days they plan to attend, Saturday, Sunday, or both. Registration is free, but required for catering purposes. Please note spots are limited, so please do email strivewell2023 at gmail.com to reserve one of the 100 spots for Defy Dementia Session on Sunday. 
as well as to reserve your spot for childcare. There are 30 spots available for kids age four to seven years old on Sunday. Do not miss out. We will see you there. Do you play the drums? How about the keys? Or maybe you sing. What about spoken word? Roses are red, violets are blue, I love Jesus, how about you? Whatever your talent may be, come and showcase it at this year's Youth Talent Show. There is a special prize to be won, so don't delay in signing up. Don't have something prepared for this year's talent show? Not to worry. Come on out on October 11th at 7 p.m. to see all of the featured acts. There will also be a variety of door prizes to be won. There is an entry ticket cost of $15, and all of the money raised will go towards a youth trip to North American Youth Congress 2025. Hope to see you there. It's not very demure. Grace Singles, join us on Saturday, October 19th at Grace for a singles conference starting at 11 a.m. The theme is Singles Walking Into Success. Don't miss this empowering event. We are excited to announce our annual Taste Market event in celebration of All Nations Sunday. This special event will be held on Sunday, October 20th in the multi-purpose area directly following morning service. It's a wonderful opportunity to experience and enjoy the diverse culinary traditions from around the world. If you'd like to represent your country with a dish or beverage, please contact Sister Simone or Sister Cavell by October 6th. Let's come together to celebrate our diversity through food. We look forward to seeing you there. Hey Grace family, if you're interested in being part of the Christmas production, please see Sister Terry Jo for more details. That is all for our announcements this week. To stay up to date, be sure to follow all of our social media platforms. As the worship team returns, we encourage you to continue worshiping with us. See you next time. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can I get a praise the Lord one more time? At this time, we're going to be doing our welcome to Grace. So if there's any first-time visitors in the house this morning, we would like to acknowledge you so that our ushers can take note and give you a special gift. Do we have any first-time guests? Well, it looks like it's just the family today. So let's all stand this morning, and we're going to get up. We're going to walk around, greet each other. It has been a week, so you might not have seen you know who you wanted to see all week. So let's get up and go and just greet somebody in Jesus' name. Greet somebody in Jesus' name. Tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody, smile, Jesus loves you. Everybody, smile, Jesus loves Greet somebody, greet somebody in Jesus' name. Tell them that you love them. Welcome, welcome to Grace. <clears throat> and at this time, since it is indeed Youth Sunday, 
We do a thing traditionally on Youth Sunday where we acknowledge all of the birthdays of the month. So at this time, all of our September babies in the House of Grace, it is your time to shine and get your birthday flowers. to all of our September babies in the House of Grace, we would like to wish you a very, very happy and blessed birthday. <laughs> so now at this time, we are going to be taking up our morning's offering. So if we can all stand at this time, and I'm going to ask Brother Gio if he can bless the offering this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. I'll quickly pray for the offering. Lord, we thank you for bringing us in your house this morning, Lord. Continue to keep us and bless us and strengthen us in our going and our coming. Bless those who have to give and bless those who don't. And we thank you in this day in your name. Amen. Just march around with your offering as the ushers lead you. Bye. 
of the land, you'll feed me. Oh. oh, Jesus. And for that blessed hope that there is a mansion in the sky that he will deed me. Oh. And I know the high place, my God, he will bring it down. I know my God will bring it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. And that is why, hallelujah, as we begin to turn the order of our service to invitation to worship, I want to be closer to God because the closer I can get, oh, the closer I can get to Jesus. Hallelujah. Just the closer I can get to Jesus is my desire. He's all that I want. He's all that I need. Nothing else on this world matters but Jesus. So as we go into our invitation to worship, I just pray and hope that you listen to these words and really take them in. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Draw me close to you. Help me find the way 
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Surely the presence of the Lord is here. Praise God. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Lord, we give you thanks. We bless your holy name. Let's just give him some more thanks in here today. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're all we want, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So that sweet presence here today, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And when I look at the faces of the young people, I feel so blessed. It's Youth Sunday. Come on, it's Youth Sunday. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And we have a wonderful, special young lady here with us today. And I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. A lovely young lady. She hails from New York. Praise God. Just next door, she's our neighbor. Uh, she is the youth secretary, former youth president of All Nations Apostolic Tabernacle. She's a sister, a friend, hyphen director, um, preteen Sunday school teacher. Um, I could go on and on, amen? Praise God, praise God. But more than anything, she's a young lady that loves the Lord and she loves people. And she's here just to greet us. Thank you so much, Brother Denver. She's here to greet us today and just leave a word of, encour leave a word of encouragement following that our speaker uh, will come this afternoon. Young people, continue to worship the Lord. Worship with Sister Lori on behalf of Pastor Eastman and the Youth Committee. Welcome in Jesus' name. Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. And you may be seated. It's so good to be here with my Grace family again. I greet Pastor Eastman and Sister Eastman and my sister and friend, Yannick Grant Harris, and all God's precious people, I greet you. I know that today is Youth Sunday, and I just want to encourage the heart of every youth in the house, age-wise and also young at heart, however you feel. We're all youths in some way or form, right? So whatever obstacles you face in life, whether it pertains to mental health, family issues, financial struggles, internal struggles, battles, you can overcome. Can I say you can overcome? Every hurdle and every obstacle in the name of the Lord Jesus. Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm going to say that one more time to let it resonate. In nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. The Bible also says in Philippians 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. I can do all things. So youths, you can make it through any storm. In fact, with Christ in your vessel, you can smile at the storm and keep sailing on through life, as a songwriter says. And when you're feeling low, you can reach out to your help, which the Lord, the maker himself. Psalms 121 verses 1 through 5 says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He keep it. He he that keepeth thee will never slumber nor sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. So youths, you can make it. You are more than a conqueror. And he is your helper and he is your keeper. So as you go on from faith to faith and from glory to glory, continue to lift Jesus higher. Amen. God bless you all. And here comes Brother Dwight in the name of the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise in this building. Hallelujah. Are you more than a conqueror today? I wonder if I got some conquerors in the building today. <laughs> the devil is a liar today. We got more than conquerors in this building. To hell and high water, we're still here. To many dangers, toils, and snares, we're still here. Some through the fire, some through the flood, but all through the blood, because we're more than. <laughs> more than, more than. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in God's service. You can be quiet if you will, but I know if you go to the cemetery right now and turn on the alarm clock, nobody's getting up. But as for me and my house, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises. Mm. <laughs> God has been too good to me for me to be silent on him. He's
brought me to too many things for me to shut up and not give him the praise. He's worthy from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. If you would look into the heavenlies, there are angels that are crying day and night. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And guess what? The whole earth, the whole earth. And if the people don't want to praise him, he's still excellent. If people don't want to praise him, there's some rocks right outside that God can raise up and give him a praise. Let me behave myself. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, <laughs> my soul, my soul has to shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him for his good and his mercy endure forever. Praise him. Let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath. Praise him. Praise him when you're down. Praise him when you're up. Praise him when you're sick. Praise him when you're well. Praise him for he is good. Amen. I greet all of you in the wonderful name of Jesus. I've just got some housekeeping to do before I get into the word of God. Once again, make sure next week we go all to the symposium from Saturday to Sunday. In fact, men, show your hands. Men. All right. Did you register? Let me hear an amen. I didn't hear everybody amen. So those of you who didn't, please do so today. This has been a year in the making a lot of blood, sweat, and tears have been put into this. And it's not just to have a symposium, but it's for your holistic benefit. It's one thing to give you the word of God, but it's another thing to teach you how to take care of yourself. And as for men, you know, a lot of times we're scared to go to the doctor. We don't go to the doctor until it's too late. And so we're going to learn about how to have preventative measures, especially when it comes to cancer. And cancers that pertain to men, such as prostate cancer and testicular cancer. So please, if you love yourself and you love your family, show up. Amen. Uh, immediately after service, also, men, we're going to need your help to help set up. And I put it in the men's chat, but today we're going to start with trying to put all the chairs in the, the room right here to my right. We're going to put at least 100 chairs. And then after that, the next task at hand is to... Uh, set up in the multi-purpose area so immediately after service come see me and then we can get things rolling because we want to see God show up in this place amen I have a saying uh, many hands make much work light and so I want all hands on deck I'm calling for all hands on deck and just to remind you once again next week is the low low price of free you may not hear it it's the low, low price of pre, free. And you can get one free. Buy one, get one free. Tell your neighbor it's free. All right. And so with that said, let's all stand. Thank you, Sister Lori, for a wonderful word of encouragement. God bless you. It's so good to be here on a youth Sunday. And so I have, what did you say, Elder? Young at heart, exactly. Because as you can see here, these grays don't show or portray youth. <laughs> My squinting of eyes through the text do not portray youth. But I have a word from the Lord today, and I hope that all of us, especially our youth, will be blessed. Our word is going to be found in two particular scriptures. One in Daniel chapter 6 and Psalm 37. Daniel chapter 6. Amen. And that is the King James Version. And sometimes you have to go back to certain things that you already knew. We take it for granted some of these Bible lessons and stories that we've learned. And sometimes God brings you back to them just to show you once again what he's all about. And so in Daniel chapter 6 and 20 it reads, And when he, which is King Darius, the ruler of Babylon, came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O oh Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able?
able to deliver thee from the lions? And Psalm 37, 25 echoes my response to us young people and everyone today. I was young and now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. I'm here to let you to know today God will deliver. Touch your neighbor and say, God will deliver. God will deliver. Heavenly Father, as we stand before your presence, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. And I pray, oh God, let your spirit right now fall down afresh upon each and every one of us. As I speak your words, let your anointing fall afresh upon me again, oh God, dear Jesus, to speak as how you would want me to speak. Give us ears to hear, oh God, and a heart to obey. We rebuke every disobedient spirit, every contrary spirit, every spirit of distraction and disruption, we come against it with the blood of Jesus. Let you arise in this house and let the enemy be scattered. We ask for victory and we declare victory in this camp. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Once again, welcome on this wonderful Sunday morning. It's so good to see all of God's people in the house and visitors and loved ones in the house and in the sanctuary once again. Never take it for granted that you're here. Never take it for granted that you are allowed here for such a time as this. And that's why when I come into the house, when I'm not in the house, when I'm even on a Monday and a Tuesday, I wake up with a note of thanksgiving say, Lord, thank you once again for another day's journey. Thank you for waking me up because many did not wake up. Many are in certain situations that they would wish to God that the grave would be their portion. Some people are in so much problems and troubles and struggles that death seems like an excellent option. But praise be unto God. He's woken on us up and then has started us on our way and we're here today. And so, you know, it's very important that we follow the flow of God. You see, God is a spirit. And in the book of the beginnings, Genesis, the scriptures declare that God moved upon the face of the waters. God is not a static God by any means. He's always moving. And whether it's a cloud by day or pillar of fire by night, God is always moving. And you need to follow the spirit of the Lord. Can someone say amen? And so a few weeks ago, Minister Hunt uh, was preaching and the Lord dealt with us regarding us to ensure that we have the salt and the light. Remember that? Last week, Brother Rashad let us know that God is that omniscient one, that he sees us. He, he knows our works, Brother Rashad, and he knows the little strength that we have, but he will be able to stand by us and support us. And so today I believe that God wants to deposit or, or download something in our spirit. He wants to download more strength in our spirit to blossom resilience, endurance, and perseverance in this never-ending pilgrim journey that we have. Oh, yes, it's a rocky road to, to be a Christian nowadays, especially in these last days. And so the main character of today's text is Daniel, as we read earlier. You see, Daniel was a young man. He was brought into not so favorable conditions in his youth. At the tender and volatile age of 17 or 18, historians say he was brought into hostile conditions, if you will. He was exiled out of his home, the, the place of comfort, the place of security, uh, the, the place where he was familiar with. He was brought into captivity into Babylon, the strange culture, an alien customs, uh, a strange land, uh, an uncomfortable place. Daniel, like a true child of God, though, was blessed. And no matter where he was... He showed that he was blessed. He, he exemplified, amen, the first psalm. It says, blessed is the one who does not walk and step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither and whatsoever they do 
they prosper. Now, although Daniel was brought into captivity, the favor of God was upon him. He, he may not have seen himself as such, but the Bible stated that the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, ordered a chief of his court officials to bring into the king's servants, services, I say, uh, Israelites from the royal family and nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, all right, check mark, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, check mark again, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. And, and you may not see great value in your life, young people, but even the world sees value in you. You need to say to yourself sometimes, I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And, and you need to know who, what you identify or who you are. You need to know what you identify as. Because you see, the chief official gave Daniel a new name. His name is called Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar primarily meant protect the life of the king. The king basically rearranged his name and says, I, I'm going to call you protect the life of the king. And that's one interpretation. Another interpretation of that name means Bel or Babylonian, which is a Babylonian god, will protect. Bel will protect. The Babylonian god will protect. And that's what Belteshazzar meant. And another interp interpretation, which I found was very interesting, it meant lady protect the king, which is quite derogatory, seeing Daniel was a male and they were calling him otherwise. And whichever way you want to look at it, the prevailing meaning seems to be an appeal for the protection to the Babylonian god, Bel. But we know that his name was not Belteshazzar. He was born a Daniel. I'll say that again. He was born a Daniel. Daniel meant God is my judge. Daniel meant God is my job. It, it, judge. It insinuates that God calls the shots. God has the final say. God has the final verdict. It implies that God's word, like a judge, stands and it will not return unto him void. He's still a Daniel and the takeaway I get from this, don't let the world's labels define you young people. If Reverend Jesse Jackson was here today, he would say, I am somebody. <laughs> Don't let society confuse you on who God created you to be. Oh, you don't hear me today. I'm, I'm, I'm treading delicately there, but the society that we live in will try to confuse our young people and confuse you as to who you really are. Know and remember this, that when you are in God, you are somebody. They may call you many confusing names, many hurtful names, many derogatory names, but you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. I know they call you strange sometimes, but you are a peculiar person. And guess what? You should show forth the praises of him who had brought you out of darkness into marvelous light. Can someone say amen? And so Daniel... Being brought into captivity was under a three-year apprenticeship. These young men were supposed to be trained to enter into the king's service for three years. They would be provided the finest of foods and wine and at the king's table. But the Bible says, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. He was not comfortable with the Babylonian food, if you will. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself. Could you imagine that in his newfound position of privilege, because remember now, everyone outside of the palace is living a rough life because they're in captivity, but he's in the palace. He's living the good life, the high life. Daniel took a bold stance to sacrifice his luxurious lifestyle and made a boundary. He says, I'm not eating your food. I'm not eating your jerk pork. I'm not eating your Arnold. I'm, I'm not eating your jerk fowl. I'm not eating the mutton. I'm not eating the beef. I'm not eating the spicy cow food. I'm not eating the pepper pot. I'm not eating the cook up. I'm not even eating the fried snapper. None of the king's meat or food am I touching. And I'm pretty sure it smelled real good, Pastor. He had the finest of chefs. But Daniel purpose, I'm not defiling myself 
with what the world has to offer. The Bible says that God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official was worried that Daniel wouldn't be fit enough to perform if he wasn't sustained by the king's diet. And his life as an official will be in jeopardy because understand this, Nebuchadnezzar was not one to be played with. As one would say, he was a real bad man. <laughs> Just for context, Nebuchadnezzar invaded Israel and captured its then king, Zedekiah. Amen. And as he captured Zedekiah, he slew Zedekiah's sons in front of him and then plucked out his eyes to make that the last burning memory in his mind and then brought him back into captivity. You see, Nebuchadnezzar was not one that you wanted to get on his bad side. But you see, Daniel purposed a diet of just vegetables and water for 10 days. And we even do that today in our Daniel fast. And he did that to see if he would not be just as good, if not better, than the Babylonians. And after 10 days, Daniel was presented to Nebuchadnezzar and the king talked with him and his colleagues who was on the same dietary program, that same fast, found that they were just as good if not better because when Nebuchadnezzar began to speak to them, whether it would be matters of wisdom or questions, the king found them to be ten times better than the magicians and the enchanters of his whole kingdom. And the takeaway lesson there, young people, is when you take a stand for God, he will take a stand for you. I'll say it again. When he t you take a stand for God, he will take a stand for you. And when you make a sacrifice unto God, he will acknowledge it. And he will not be a debtor to any man. Can someone say amen? And so throughout Daniel's life, he, he sees God as a deliverer. The Bible says a man's gift will make room for him. And the scriptures in the second year of King Nebuchadnezzar's reign, he had a dream that troubled him. And we all know this dream, and I'm not going to go into great details, but he had a dream that troubled him, and he needed someone to interpret it. And he said to the magicians and the enchanters and the sorcerers and the astrologers, if you guys are the real deal, tell me the dream that I had and tell me what it means. And he said, if you can't do it, I will cut you in pieces and your houses will be turned into piles of rubble. You see, he's a real bad man. <laughs> and the astrologers and the, the rest of the people pleaded with the king and said, no one can reveal it to the king except the gods. And they do not live among the humans. Nebuchadnezzar said, I hear you. I saw. <laughs> he got angry. He got cross. Sister Jessica, he got miserable. <laughs> Instantaneously, he ordered the execution of all the wise men. And when it came time for the commander of the king's guard to go snatch Daniel and his friends to put them to death, Daniel, with his wisdom intact, asked, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? The king's guard explained the situation, and then Daniel, through bravery, went into the king and asked for a little more time. Daniel is slick. He said, give me some more time that I might interpret the dream. Daniel went back to his colleagues, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and they had an impromptu all-night prayer meeting. Young people, I admonish you, associate yourself with people who know how to pray. I know it's cool to have cool people in your crew, you know. You definitely need to have people who have money and deep pockets and what have you and can spend. Yes, you need that in your crew. You need someone that has a car so that when you want to go to conventions and go to outings, yes, you need someone like that in your crew. But definitely you need people who know how to pray. You see, prayer works. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Men are always to pray and not to faint. Child of God, make sure you link up with someone who can get a hold of God. Especially when you're in trouble. Can someone say amen? And so during the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. And as Daniel gets the answer, he immediately praises God. I don't know if you ever prayed for something.
And God answered so greatly that you just had to have a praise break right there and then. <laughs> You've been praying and all of a sudden God just dropped it right there. The answer, God just opened the door right there. That You just had to shout and say, God, you're good. You got to run to the washroom at work, lock it up, and just shout out to God with a voice of triumph, knowing that he's a prayer answering God. I wish I had a witness in the house. The poor man cried and he heard his voice. And so he sought the face of God and a breakthrough came and God came through and you can't go wrong when you raise a praise. Take it from a praiser. You can't go wrong when you raise a praise. He inhabits the praises of his. Mm. And so Daniel goes to the king and he interprets the dream and the conclusion of the interpretation. The Bible says King Nebuchadnezzar falls prostrate before young Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and revealer of mysteries for you were able to reveal this mystery. You see, God always gets the glory out of our lives. Daniel was given a high position after that. He was made the ruler of the entire province of Babylon and was placed in charge of all the wise men. He was lavish with many gifts. And at the request of Daniel, as he's been promoted, the king appointed Shadrach, his brethren, Meshach, his brethren, and Abednego as administrators over the province of Babylon. And the life lesson I get here is don't forget who were with you when you needed help. Hmm. Don't forget those who were there with you when times were tough. We got a way nowadays people forget where they came from and forget who was with them when they were down and out. But Daniel never forgot who was with him. Daniel always remembered his people. Can someone say amen? Those who listen to you gripe and groan and complain and cry and murmur and stumble in your struggles. But now you've arrived. Remember those people. Remember your ride or dies. Can someone say glory? And so in chapter 4 of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar gets another dream where Daniel has to interpret. And in this scenario, the interpretation is one which wasn't favorable for the king. But it's... But Daniel, in his consistency and boldness and loyalty to God, Daniel, who, who doesn't watch anybody's face, Daniel's not afraid of anybody. As bad as Nebuchadnezzar is, Daniel is not going to curry any favor with him. He stands for God. Young people, stand for God. He says to him, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins. He called out Nebuchadnezzar. He says, you're doing wrong and, and your weakness is not pleasing to God. But if, if you turn from your weakness and, and be kind to the oppressed, it may be then that your prosperity will continue or your prosperity will continue. But the stiff-necked Nebuchadnezzar doesn't take talking, doesn't take heed. And God has to humble him and he humbles him by turning him into a common beast, hairs, and, and just looking like a wild animal sleeping on the dew of the grass for an entire year. The ruler of the then world was out of his mind while Daniel was kept in his right mind just because he humbly served God. You see, when you privately stay humble under God, God will never have to publicly humble you. I'll say it again. When you stay humble privately under God in prayer and supplication, he won't have to publicly humble you. Chapter 5, King Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son. Nebuchadnezzar is now off the scene and now he has a son who is the reigning king. He made a grave mistake and we all know the story. He mishandled the holy things of God. King Belshazzar got bright with himself. He started to smell himself and he decided to use the gold goblets and take them from the temple of that, that, that was in Jerusalem and began to drink with them, drink from them with his nobles and wives and even concubines hmm. total disregard for the things of God and the life lesson I get from that is be careful how you handle God's property be careful how you talk about God's people 
Be careful how you talk about his people. Be careful how you talk about God's people. They are the apple of his eye. Scripture says, touch not God's anointed and do his prophets no harm. You see, God moved a leader out of the way just for misusing his wares. It's not that he touched anybody, but God moved him out of the way because he touched his cups. Don't mess with God. Don't play with God. Don't play with anything with God. And so soon enough, God wrote on the wall, and we know this story very well, and let them know that the interpretation from Daniel that the party was over. And so we jump now to chapter 6 where our text was read from. Through those previous books and chapters, Daniel was relatively young, Brother Gio. But he's seen God move and deliver time and time again. From the time he got there, he could see the goodness of God. That's why we love that song today. All my life, you have been what? Faithful. All my life, you have been so, so. Daniel was singing that song day in and day out. Year after year, not only him but his brethren. He was singing that song, saying how good God is. And they would echo it back to him and say, hey, you think he's good? They delivered, God delivered me from a fiery furnace. And yes, that's our God. And year after year went by. And now in chapter 6, it seems kind of short, but a lot of time has passed. Daniel is roughly now in the ripe age of his late 70s. And he, he must have thought everything must be fine now. You know, I've, I've been through the worst. I've been through a lot of things. Uh, Belshazzar, the, the idiot king I call him, is now dead. And now a new boss has showed up, King Darius. Darius seems to get along very well with Daniel. In fact, he has favor with Daniel. And, and Daniel has garnered some respect over the years. He's the interpreter of interpreters. He's the head of all the nobles. He's the ruler over princes and, and governors. And surely he didn't have to prove himself anymore. Because he already have, God had already paved a track record of favor for him. The Bible says in verse 3 that this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought that to set him over the whole realm. You see, this new king liked him and appoint, appointed him over 20 princes. Daniel was now officially arrived. He's no longer the head of the magicians and guys that do tricks in the opium and them. No, 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 no. Now he's in government. He's a governor, if you will. He's running things. He's calling shots. He's officially arrived. But as always, life is funny. As always, those who serve God wholeheartedly, young people, as long as you serve God wholeheartedly, you will have haters. As long as you are a child of God and you're devoted to serving God, you will have haters. <laughs> uh, the, the Bible says that then the presidents and the priests, princes, sought to find occasion against Daniel, who did nothing concerning the kingdom. But they could not find one occasion or fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. I'm here to echo it again. As long as you are blessed, there will be haters in your life. And don't be mad at them because they are a good indicator that the blessings of God are in your life. If you want to know that you're truly blessed in your life, count how many haters you have. <laughs> Jesus had many haters and he was blessed and highly favored. I don't know about you today, but if you got a lot of haters in your life, you need to shout glory. Hey, rejoice, the Bible says. And be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. Hmm. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you. That's Jesus' words if you didn't understand where I was coming from found in Matthew chapter 5. 
The Bible records that this council, this evil council of governors and princes, princes schemed up a plan to have the king issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days except the king shall be thrown in the lion's den. And so King Darius made the decree and put it in writing so that it could not be altered as a accordance to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. In other words, once they say it, they can't take back their word. Once they put it down, they can't revoke it. They can't reverse it. And so the law was put down. But no matter what the law is, you need to be yourself as a child of God. You see, now when this was implemented and Daniel found out, it's not like Daniel didn't know. He found out that there's a new law in town that you can't pray. And you got to pray to someone who is not God. <laughs> oh, who tell them if it says so? <laughs> not my David. Bold, brave, don't watch no face, David. <laughs> now the Bible says in verse 10, when Daniel, or I should say Daniel. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to the upstairs room where the windows were open toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he did before. He didn't change. The law changed. The society changed. The world changed. But he didn't change. Does God ever change? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if I'm a child of God, should I change? I should still be the same. Hmm. And so let me tell you this, your consistency in serving God, your commitment to honoring God, your resilience to not back down from the enemy and defy the enemy in his face will eventually lead you to victory. Be consistent. Be committed. Be resilient. Because victory is ahead. Child of God, victory is ahead. If you stand your ground, keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep praising. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep praising. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep pra pra praising. The Bible states that the council of schemers got wind of Daniel's defiance to the king's decree and brought him into the king's attention he brought they brought it to the king's attention that what Daniel was doing they told him Daniel who is the one of the exiles from Judah pays no attention to you king your majesty or to your decrees you put in writing he still prays three times a day basically they snitched on him isn't it funny that nothing's new under the sun we got snitches now I mean, even back in Daniel's day you got people snitching Say, oh, he ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing. And when King Darius heard this, the Bible says he was greatly distressed or he was sore displeased with himself because he knew he got got. He got hoodwinked, bamboozled. He got scammed because he knew as soon as it happened, oh, man, I can't take back my word. And being the good man that he was, he desperately tried to figure out a plan to rescue Daniel before the time ran out, which was sundown. He was looking for a loophole. He didn't want Daniel to face the judgment of the lion's den. And you might be looking and say, oh, lion's den. What, what is that all about? And we, sometimes we flip over certain things and say, oh, yeah, lion's den. Who here has ever been to the zoo? Aren't you glad that they have that nice protective plexiglass between you and the wild animal? Those high fences? They didn't have that in Daniel's day. In fact, the definition of a lion's den is very simply, it's a natural stone cave. Lions tend to live in stone caves. And so, I don't know about you, but stone isn't easy to dig out. Especially if you don't have tools. Ah, oh, the lion's den, it's a dark place. It's not easy to navigate. It's very unfamiliar. It's a place of confinement, a place of limitation due to the boundaries of the stone walls. It's almost like you're in prison because it confines and constrains you. You are limited in your mobility. It's a place that is uncomfortable. 
There's no provision. There's no food. There's, there's no water. There's no light. It's dark. It's a dungeon. That's the lion's den. And to make matters worse, it's the habitation of predatory animals such as lions. A place where multiple enemies of the food chain instinctively stronger than you, quicker than you, outnumber you. You're in the enemy's territory with no weapons, no superhuman strength, and no escape. That is the lion's den that Daniel was brought to. And unfortunately, there was no way that the king could find a loophole. His hands were tied. And he eventually had to concede defeat by his own hands. The king's hands could not do anything. Daniel had to be sent to the lion's den. Be but before Daniel was sent to the den, uh, there was something that happened. God used the king. Suddenly God turned it around. The Bible says, now the king spake. Usually it was Daniel that was doing the speaking. It was Daniel that was doing the prophesying. It was Daniel that was providing the word. All of a sudden, God used a Babylonian king. And said, now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou serveth continually... I got a word for you, Daniel. I may not go to church and I don't serve the God that you serve. But that God that you serve, he will deliver thee. I'm here to let you know God will always provide you a word in your lion's den. And so what do you do when you are put into a lion's den? Let me tell you this. We all face a lion's den moment in life. Young people, if you haven't, your day of the lion's den moment will be approaching. Job said, a man who is born of a woman is full of trouble. In other words, as long as you're human, you will have trouble in this life. The pitfalls of life, my brother, hmm, are inevitable. Are they, at times, they're unavoidable. And, but don't be afraid, don't, brothers and sisters, don't be afraid, young people, don't be afraid, don't be alarmed. I have good news. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. And so what do you do in a lion's den moment? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I don't care how dark that lion's den is. He will direct your path. I don't care how confined it is. He will keep you. I don't care how many lions are roaring in your lion's den. Trust in the Lord. Again, I ask you, what do you do in a lion's den moment? Wait on the Lord. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. David put it eloquently. He says, I waited in my lion's den moment. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also of a horrible pit out of the miry clay. But guess what? He set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And my host uh, had put a new song in my mouth, even a praise unto God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Please be reminded that the Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts who will fight your battles. He's with us. No matter how dire your lion den situation is. Lift up your heads. Holy gates. And be lifted up. Ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? Guess what? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. It doesn't matter what kind of battle you're going through. Financial battle, emotional battle, relationship battle, academic battle, health battle, mental battle, family battle, ministry battle. No matter what the battle is, as long as the Lord of hosts is with you, he will fight your battle because victory belongs to Jesus. Stand still and see the salvation of your Lord for he is a very present help time of trouble. 
Let me tell you, when the chips are down and your back is against the wall and there's no way out, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. That's Jesus for you. And if he did it before, ah, I got a witness in the house. He'll do it again because he's that type of God. He's that consistent good God. He has a track record, Daniel. He has a track record. He is a track record. He's done it before. He did it for your forefathers. He'll do it for you. He did it for the black. He'll do it for you. He did it for the white. He did it for you. He did it for the other ones. He'll do it for you no matter who you are, where you are. He'll do it for the sinner. He'll do it for the ungodly. He'll do it for the whomsoever will. That's the compassionate heavenly father that we have. How much the more those of you who are called by his name. Mm. And so what do you do when you are put in a lion's den? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, what do you do when you, everything seems to go wrong in life? You see, the, the lion's den moment has purpose in your life. As funny as it sounds, the scripture says that in everything, give thanks. Everything. Everything. Read the word and everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning us. Because all things work together for good to them that are the called according to his purpose. The book of James declares, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into Tiver's temptations, Tiver's lion's tents, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You see, the lion's den is the place where faith is tested. I'll say it again. The lion's den is the place where your faith is going to be tested. It's a place where patience is perfected. Being in the lion's den is nerve-wracking. No mistakes about it. It plays on your mental well-being. You become at edge. At times you don't know if you're coming or you're going in the lion's den. You don't know what's happening. The lion's den moment can bring intense frustration. You're frustrated because you are helpless. And you're exhausted in trying to figure out and execute a solution. You're literally at the mercy of the lion's can't climb your way out. You can't jump your way out. There's no resources to assist you. No escalator, no stairs, no, no ladder, no rope, no, no weapon. Your efforts are ineffective. Your skills are worthless. You take the advice. You, you, you took the counseling. You, you read the books. You go to the seminars. You, you do the steps. You take the pills. You take the medication. You do the therapy, but you're still in the lion's den. I'm here to let you know just because you can't figure it out doesn't mean that God hasn't worked it out. In your finite mind, you're trying to figure it out. God is telling you today, I've already worked it out. And just because your help is delayed doesn't mean it is denied. <laughs> Someone needs to shout right now. Just because God is delaying his hand doesn't mean he's forgotten about your situation. <laughs> the lion's den is a testing ground of your faith in God and a nurturing ground for your patience in God. Job put it this way, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time I will wait until my change comes. And so God, in the midst of of all of that does the miraculous for Daniel. God, the Bible says in chapter, verse 19, at the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. And when he came near the den, as the morning's text was read, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God. Has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? And there was a hush as you hear right now. 
And then soon enough, Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut up the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. I'm telling you, the king was overjoyed. The king began to dance. The king, you didn't hear me today. The Babylonian king began to worship the almighty God. And he gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted out of the den, no wound. Isn't God amazing? The same God that put the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace and no smoke is the same God that can let you stay in a lion's den and not a scratch. <laughs> I know the enemy wants to see you dead, but you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Let me prophesy to you today. You're not going to die. This is not the end. This is not the final chapter. Because the lion's den is that transitional point to your next level in God. This is where it gets crucial now. The lion's den, yes, it, it's there to test your faith. It's there to perfect patience in you. But more importantly, it's the transitional point to your next level in God. It is that examination and graduation ceremony, if you will, to your next level in God. Once you come out of this, listen closely. And I declare this prophetically unto every one of you. You will come out of this. I don't know what you're going through. But God sent me to tell you, you will get out of this. I don't care what the sickness is, you will get out of it. The hurt, you will get out of it. The slump, you will get out of it. The depression, you will get out of it. The debt, you will get out of it. The financial constraint, you will get out of it. The unemployment, you will get out of it. That holding pattern you're in, you're going to get out of it. But as you get out of it, you will never be the same. God's going to bring you out, but you're never going to be the same. I declare it, you'll never be the same once God pulls you out. Brother Paul said it most eloquently to us in Romans 8, and this is one of my favorite go-to nowadays in these last days. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nay, in all these things, Sister Lori, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I, I don't know about you today, but I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature, no lion's den shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You see, the lion's den reveals who you are. It reveals who God is, and it displays the glory of God. It reveals who you are, it reveals who God is, and it displays the glory of God. And as difficult as it may be at times, nothing is sweeter in life than God taking vengeance upon your haters. <laughs> I know sometimes we like to take matters in our own hands, but nothing is better than to hold your peace and stand still and let the Lord fight your battles. Nothing sweeter in life, sister, that when someone says all manner of negativity against you and you don't even try to rectify the situation, talk if they talk, bark if they want to bark, but you just hold your corner until God steps in. Bible says at the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into that same lion's den. And along with their wives and children, remember Daniel alone was sent in. And he came out without a scratch. 
The Bible says that all these people that could probably pull together and strategize something and, and maybe do something to, to, to thwart off the enemy's attack, they were thrown in. And before they even reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them. The Bible says they had the mastery <laughs> over them. They crushed all their bones. Uh, the trials and tests you're about to come out of. When you look back at it, you will know that God kept you. You will know without a shadow of a doubt that he is a deliverer. In fact, in this lion's den moment, there is a testimony to be acknowledged that God is a deliverer. Jesus is a deliverer. The Bible declared that the Babylonian king Darius created his own gospel based on Daniel's ordeal. It states that I issue a decree that in every part of the kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. This is verse 26. For the, he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and in the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. And so in conclusion, young person, brother and sister in the Lord, loved ones, I was once young like you, just like Daniel. And I've seen them come, I've seen them go. I've seen God do a lot of things in my life. He's delivered me from accidents and sicknesses and issues and ordeals and if you ask many of us in this building that are a little bit older you will find out that God is consistent in delivering his people if you ask sister Tracy you will find out what God can deliver from if you ask some of our elders in this place you will know what God can deliver you from and so I was once young like you but as you can see by my goatee here I'm not as young as I feel, I'm now reaching on to graduate into Sister Wright's leagues. And that's why I went on the trip with you guys to be on training ground with the savvy seniors <laughs> to get my badge and stripes. And so I no longer can stand up when they say, all of those under 35 stand up. I just have to hold my car now, cut my 10, and say, go on, go on. I'm no longer young. I might jump, I might shout, I might act young. But come Monday morning, these knees, this back, I gingerly have to get out the bed, my brother. Gingerly have to go to the washroom. <laughs> it's not like before, brother window, when you have a nice rest in your bed. You know, sometimes two, two times a night you have to get up and make a little run <laughs> to the washroom because you're no longer young. But guess what? I've never seen, I've never seen, I've never seen the righteous, those that live for God. Yes, they go through lion's dens. Yes, they go through fiery furnaces. But I've never seen the righteous for us. I've never seen God turn his back on any of his people. I've never seen God sell out any of his people. He says, I will be with you even until the very end. Mother and father will leave you at times. Friends and family may desert you, but there's one that sticketh closer than any other, and that's my Jesus. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And guess what? You don't have to beg no bread because God is on the job. You see, the preservation of your mind, body, and spirit is contingent to your faith in God. God protected and sustained Daniel because his consistent and resilient faith in him. He was resilient and he was consistent. And God is not concerned with man's laws. He saved Daniel because Daniel obeyed his voice. Daniel obeyed the faithful laws of God. And simply put, if you stay faithful to God, he will be faithful to you. If you want to wrap it all up, be faithful to God, young people, 
and he will be faithful to you. I'll say it again for good measure. Be faithful to God and he will be faithful to you. And so I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. The good news today, unlike Daniel, he didn't have the Holy Ghost. But we today can have the deliverer abide with us through Jesus Christ. If you are willing to make a vow to live for God, if you're willing to obey the voice of the Lord and follow him, if you're willing to abandon your ways that are not pleasing to God and tell him that you're sorry for the wrong you've done and surrender unto him, if you're willing to take on the name of Jesus Christ in water baptism, if you're willing to receive the Lord in your heart in the manifestation of the Holy Ghost through the evidence of speaking in tongues, today is your day of deliverance. Let's stand. I don't know what is going on in everyone's life, but I do know one thing. The lion's den moment is real. It is real. As much as you may not think it and say, no, my God, how could such a good God do such a thing? Sometimes he has to put you through the fire so that you can come out as pure gold. Some of you are, might be in your fiery furnace, in your lion's den. I am encouraging you to come and say, God, I still trust you. Joe, when he went through his lion's den situation or his hot trial, he says, though he slay me, he got some hot licks, some heavy blows. And he was a righteous man, the Bible says. But he still trusted God. I'm not saying this road is easy, young people. It's hard to be truthful. Many of us who are elderly, there were times in our walk that we almost let go. If you asked us and if we were to be transparent, there are times that some of us even threw in the towel for a moment. But God never fails. Jesus never fails. And if you are here today by the sounding of my voice and you need renewed strength, renewed resilience, you need to cope with life a little bit better, I'm asking you to come to this altar. God is a deliverer. God is a deliverer. You might be in a situation that no one else knows. You are in a problem all by yourself. All you can see are walls. All you can hear is the enemy roaring lions all around you. There is a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. And guess what? He sees you. He sees you have a little strength, but he's willing to stand by you. Because you know what? He's invested in you. You are light and you are salt. And he does not want to have his, in, his investment return onto him void. Why don't you come today and get renewed strength? Get renewed strength. The altar is open. And whoever you are, wherever you are, young people, in fact, I'm going to ask all the young people.